Here we are for episode 15 of Lead the Standard, and today we're doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be sharing with you a very personal story about today's topic, expecting the unexpected and building resilience within your team. Now, I do want to start with a quick note that at a little bit of a trigger warning, today's episode does include some content that some viewers may find emotionally challenging, and I should share that there is also a minor language warning to go with that as well. But in this heartfelt episode, Jackie and I will walk you through a very personal journey and how facing these challenges prepared us for the unexpected. And my hope is that our story inspires you to build resilience both in yourself and within your team. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Leading the Standard. I am Kelly, and joining me as always is Jackie. And this episode 15, we are talking about expecting the unexpected and building resilience in your team. Now, I do want to warn you, there will very likely be some tears today. We are prepared. Well, I am prepared. I don't know about Jackie. (laughs) Um, It's a little bit different today's episode from what we would usually do because it is deeply personal. Um, I'm going to share a story that's very close to my heart, and I'm hoping that our experience can help some of you in in your day-to-day life, work, etc. So look, not everything goes to plan and that is okay. Um, I had originally planned to write this newsletter and talk today about the power of um, continual improvement in your business and conducting internal audits and you don't know that you're conducting internal audits. But I really struggled to find the inspiration to do that. So instead, as I said, I'm going to share a much more personal story that underscores why resilience is at the heart of everything we do at Atoll and how facing unexpected challenges can really prepare you for the unexpected um, and building resilience. So here we go, Jackie. Are you ready? (laughs) Um, So breathing, breathing. 12 months and three days ago, um, not barely, I'm going to say barely turned 40, but they've been there for a little while. Um, I was diagnosed with stage one breast cancer. Um, here we go. Um, it was a Friday that I got the news. My partner and I sat at the doctors and we were given that news. Um, we both reacted very differently. I went into Funnily enough, work mode. Okay. mode. Process, process. He went into, oh my God, what are we doing? How do I keep her alive? Situation. Um, that was Friday. By Sunday, um, Jackie and I, we caught up. We had a very teary, but also funny. It was, it was a very, I don't know, odd um meeting <laughs> that we I think we both definitely needed to go through. And by Monday, why we did this on Sunday, we were back delivering two days of live virtual training. We put in our biggest, bravest faces and I hope that nobody, that. Yeah, um, we mm. hoped that nobody had noticed our puffy eyes. Um, and all of that time, those two days we were delivering that, I'm watching my phone waiting for a phone call from the oncology team. So the diagnosis was obviously a big shock to me um, personally and professionally. Our small team at the time was myself, Jackie, Um, and Karen at the time, who was also um, going through some challenges of her own. Um, And as the backbone of Atoll, I thought, I can't be unwell. Jackie relies on me. Um, But despite that and the hurdles, we kept pushing forward, not because we necessarily wanted to, but we had to. Um, It wasn't good timing. (laughs) And honestly, I don't think it is. I was going to say, there's never a good time for news like this. Um, Atoll had big plans. We still do. Um, But our strong systems and processes were our lifeline in this situation. They gave me the peace of mind to know that we had things in place that would allow Atoll as a business to keep going on. Um, I was able to focus on my health and not be stressing about my team, which is something that, look, I did anyway, but not in the way of, oh, my God, the, the whole world's going to fall apart. Um, it it was these structures we had in place that helped us stay resilient. Um, and as a result, despite all of the challenge which we face, which we'll talk about today, we did finish 2023 as our best year yet. 
Um, and I really hope that by sharing this story that you can see how crucial having these elements in place um, is for your business too. Um, that was a bit easier than I thought it was going to be, to be honest. <laughs> and well that, done. Because I can't see Jackie's face right now, so that's probably really helping mm. Um, so how did this affect Atoll, um, over the past 12 months? Well, um, I'm not going to lie. It was tough. It was stressful. It was emotional for the whole team. Um, not just for me. Um, it was, I know that there was elements of burnout and, and there were, yeah, lots of, there were lots of tears, but this unplanned hurdle and we'll call it that, um, showed us that we are a resilient bunch. And I'd like to think that from the positive side of this, um, our snowflakes have landed in a better place. And I'll explain that little analogy to you later. I think it's really um, something that my breast care nurse, Shaz, she is amazing. Um, she shared with me in our very first meeting, and I think it applies to life, work, all of those things. So, Jackie? Let's take the emotional hat off for a moment and talk about how we can help others build this kind of resilience in their team. So firstly, how would you define resilience, Jackie? Oh, getting knocked down and getting back up again. <laughs> that song just came in I was just into my head. Lumber in the background. <laughs> um, yeah, and I for me, uh, I think you know, I, I do, yeah, look back at certain times and I was in tears um, wondering how I was going to hold it all together like that, you know, selfishly, but things had to keep going. Mm -hmm. And I do look back on it and think, well, you got through it. It was hard, but mm -hmm. it was okay. I, I think I needed that upsetting time where you know I was crying and it's like oh you know how how am I going to cope which as you know which I think you'll share is actually triggered something in me to go yeah. hold on this is bullshit <laughs> sorry I didn't include a trigger warning about laying I didn't include the language <laughs> <laughs> yeah like yeah because <laughs> you know it, it highlighted to me you know resourcing issues um, yeah. different tasks and yeah Kelly and I came up there was a there's there was a positive out of it um yeah. but you know with that resilience at some point you might just get knocked down and it's okay to stay down for a bit yeah it's but it's then that experience the snowflakes land in the in a different spot as you said yeah yeah so um with that so we we really i think for me personally, and it sounds so cliche, um, cancer diagnosis gave me a whole new perspective on life. Um, and I was like, I'm not going to be a cliche, totally a cliche. Um, and look, <laughs> my journey, and I and I realised as I was writing this newsletter, the, the reason I don't like that word journey anymore, um, and it's because that's how the last 12 months is key. Everyone says, you're on a journey. Um your journey is different to everyone else's. So I've, I've kind of gone, oh, okay, that's that's my, my issue there. But this journey really has made us stronger and given us so many more pathways that we can go down, but also focusing on them. So I do want to share um, six ways that people can be ready for the unexpected. Um, and those six ways are, number one, preparation, plan ahead. Consider all of the potential challenges and develop a contingency plan. Number two is adaptation. Embrace flexibility, encouraging your team to pivot quickly um, when circumstances change. Number three, communication and support. Keep those channels open. Open, honest communication is essential, especially in times of change. Number four, this one's interesting, prioritise energy management. Manage your energy, not just your time. Focusing on energy management for better outcomes. Number five, 
is value-based decision-making. Stay true to your core values. Make decisions that align to those values. Um, and I will share again with you that snow globe analogy uh, down the track. And number six is cultivate resistance. Build strength from experience. Encourage oh, resilience. Them. Yeah. Not resistance. Oh, sorry. There we go. <laughs> Cultivate resilience, <laughs> build strength from experience, encouraging learning and growth from every challenge. So, um, mm. look, there was a quote that stuck with me through all of this. Um, look, I'm going to use a few quotes and a few analogies because there's a lot going on here. But this one's from Vivian Green. And it's life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning how to dance in the rain, if your physio lets you. Um, <laughs> and, and 12 months on, the enormity of what we've all been through, yes, I had cancer and cancer was happening to me, but everyone around me was experiencing that in different ways as well. And I know that now that that dust has settled, it really has hit me like a ton of bricks, which is which is where this episode and this um, newsletter came from. But I can also see what we as a team have achieved. So um, I wanted to share all of that with you. And I think I'm probably going to get more emotional going through all of these experiences than what I've just talked about. Um, so, Jackie, topic one, preparation, planning ahead, um, planning for the unexpected. So, yes, the diagnosis was a shock. We had we had systems and processes in place, um, which were a bit of a safety net. The other thing that I suppose was a bit of a saviour for you and I was that it really was you and I running and doing all the, the business stuff. Karen was do, doing the customer service, but we were doing everything else, which in hindsight, and we'll get into that, wasn't ideal, but mm. I knew that you knew how to work on like how, how to how to do my job effectively there were a couple of things that you couldn't <laughs> mostly, do mostly mostly yeah yeah but I knew that me being out of the business while stressful and not ideal there was someone there that could do my role that could find processes and systems to help them do that role um and in hindsight we we didn't really have the best plan in place. I don't know that we really had a, a plan. No, no. no. I was going to say, I, I, was, I didn't think we were very well prepared, but you have pointed out like, like we did have procedures in place. So make sure, you know, you can hand stuff over or people can actually give it a go because I, I do remember relying on those a lot. But I think the big thing that scared us was resources. Um, yeah, because it's a lot to place on One other birth. people unexpectedly. Mm. And, you know, it got landed on the owner of the business, so I sort of had to. Um, mm. But if it's another, you know, team member, it's really quite unfair of them, on them, yeah, to be expected to take on this additional load you could yeah. say yeah and in hindsight how do you feel we could have I've got uh, opinions on this as well um how do you feel being the person on the I suppose the receiving end of this dumping of responsibility oh, horrible yeah how do you <laughs> yeah exactly and and my biggest stress I remember I remember lying in the waiting room for my first surgery. Actually, I wasn't even lying in the waiting room. It was my phone. I didn't have my phone with me because That's obviously. Good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I was booked in for, a, I think it was at eight or nine o'clock. And I didn't get in until one o'clock. And mm, all I was thinking, right. yeah, was, okay, poor John's out there getting all of these messages from all these people saying, where is she? Where is she at? And he doesn't even know. Thankfully, um, Shaz was there and um, was able to kind of communicate that. But I remember sitting there thinking, oh my God, what happens if like Jackie needs me right now? Because <laughs> I was there Friday and then Monday I was sitting in the hospital bed. Oh, hang on. It's Monday. Jackie's got to do this. Oh, hang on. I've got to tell Jackie this. Oh, I've got to tell <laughs> I was getting overwhelmed with all of the things that I would normally do on a Monday. 
that yes, there was something, but it wasn't like we didn't have time to prepare and and to plan for that. No. So, um. Obviously, we've got systems in place, more, more robust systems in place now. But and we always talk about risk strategies with um, our management systems, and I, we always have an OHS focus around safety. Um, but this situation, I don't think, is really talked about much. No, in- no, How- and I think yeah, um, that I think suppose that was a big wake up call for me personally, was that we were under-resourced. Mm. Um, and, you know, and I think it was it was difficult initially because I started the business and did everything mm. and then you came along as the first employee, now here nine years. You started off there as well. So mm. you and I know, and this is a good thing and a bad thing, yeah. know or knew how to do everything. So then as soon as something happened with and someone was gone, we'd have to fill in. Yeah. And we'd fall in quite easily. Um, but that's not how it should be. No. <laughs> we, should, no. we should have had, yeah, um, that, that's where we failed in our preparation is that you and I took the brunt of the load. Um, we covered for people um, Mm -hmm. on customer service. Um, You know, that's where I found myself as well as the sole employee for three weeks, I think, Mm -hmm. doing everything. Um, That that was on me. That was was resourcing. But something I thought of when you were saying you were laying there thinking, oh, Jackie's got to do this. What if she doesn't know? I always think we'll figure something out and you did. You didn't break yeah, anything. It, it may not be how Kelly did it. Mm. Like we'd look at the I'd look at the procedure and think, oh, I think I understand. But then it's not that I make stuff up. It's uh. yeah, it's it's got it's got to and it goes back to the communication and support. And I don't know what you're going to cover there, but to me, that communication support with our students, it's like okay. And I do remember a few issues that I wasn't sure how to resolve, but I came up with a way around it so the student wasn't impacted, they could continue. And I thought, okay, we'll just, you know, loop back around to that when Kelly's back and we'll do it the right way and we'll make sure that I understand or whoever's going to back Kelly up. Yeah, no. So don't get too caught up on having to do it exactly the same way as the other person, as long as your client, your customers can keep, you know, doing or, you know, you can still provide what you're meant to be providing. That's, that's core. Yeah. And, and that was, that was, that's a really important point there too, is that you prioritized what Mm -hmm. needed to be done. Our, Our marketing was still done but it was paired back in a simple way we reused what we already had we didn't we weren't creating new things you were doing prioritized students and customers over updating course content or anything like that um so you you rearrange those priorities um we've mentioned a few times here and look i i thought i'd cover it later but i it's probably best to cover up front is that one of the first things that we did do when i came back and look hindsight is a wonderful thing I I think we probably should have done this the Wednesday but when you're in that everything is clouded and it's and we have we're not just colleagues we're we're friends and for for you you were struggling with that Mm -hmm. friend my friend is unwell my friend, what's going to happen to her? And in that moment, we didn't know what my prognosis was either. So you yeah. had all of these things going on plus, oh, my God, my business. Yeah. So you had these double challenges. So in hindsight, we probably should have done it much sooner. But we sat down, well, Jackie started it while I, those three weeks while she was doing my job. I'm going to just when move. Said, sorry, guys, I'm just bullshit. going to move. I'm looking, I can see Jackie's eyes now and it's making me go. So I just <laughs> blocked her off. <laughs> Um, yeah, we, Jackie started writing down quite literally 
every single minute task that she did in an Excel spreadsheet. Um, <laughs> we'd done this sort of thing before when we were hiring in other roles, um, but every single task that Jackie did that was Jackie's or that was mine. that Or well, that we were doing and backing we, other people up. Yep. Every single task or or if we thought of a task that needs to be done, all of that yeah. went into an Excel spreadsheet. We then filled out and said, look, this is the job that Jackie does. This is the job that Kelly does. Kelly backs up Jackie. Jackie backs up Kelly. No one backs up Jackie. No one backs up Kelly. This is a high priority task. This needs to be done. This, And we did a gap analysis um, on our human resources. Yeah. Um, our team has now gone from the three of us that there were at the time. So I think there's now eight of us, if I've counted that correctly, plus our, our contractors. As a result of this, and we would, we weren't joking about it the other day, but we were talking, um, Melissa's role was created to fill a huge gap in that spreadsheet. Mm-hmm. And we've been handing tasks over to Melissa. And I think you had that thought, Jackie, oh, um, yeah, we've given Melissa all of this work, but it's not our 40 hour week is not reduced to 40 hour week. It's our 60, 70, 80 hour a week is now down to 40, 50, 60. Yeah. Cause we were wondering why haven't we got more time? time? This this is what the outcome of this was meant to be. But that's when we realized, hold on. It's because we were doing all of this other stuff mm. and our real job stuff we're trying to get that done may not have been getting done either so all of those tasks amounted to more than two people and, and working a full-time week yeah that's and, why yeah and i think there's still room for yeah. so filling them some gaps in there um so we've now got angus um we have Hazel doing all of our social marketing. Melissa's filled that admin gap and we've got two customer service people um, plus our contractors that do other things outside of that as well. And there's still room for mm-hmm. improvement in that. So I think the big thing that we learned from that in that planning um, was firstly understand your resources and get purely a focus on human resources here, but also making sure that those people have the tools to take on those roles and as I said have those processes in place but also make sure that somebody else does have an understanding of that role and I know that's a challenge we faced a few years ago was people went nope this is my job I'm not backing up that person because I don't need to or I don't want to but yep. you don't need to do that job every day. It's just to have an understanding so that if you do, let's flip this, win the lottery and decide that you <laughs> want to go travel the world, um, that you can do that because you have, um, also as we talk about making yourself redundant, you've, yes, yeah, and it's, again, it's not so that you can get sacked. It's so that you can have that that freedom or that peace of mind, I think, is probably more yeah. relevant. Or to you us. can move forward into other roles. Exactly. Like you, you're a perfect example of that. Yeah. You know, even though we are a small business, you've done everything because yeah. you've been able to free up stuff and hand it over to yeah. other people because then, you know, because your other strengths came out. So, yeah, yeah that's really yeah, that's really all about making yourself redundant so you can move forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which leads nicely into that second topic of adaptation and embracing flexibility. Yeah, yeah. Can I just say two things on that resource? Yeah, go for it. Because I think call I it a that, resource audit. Yeah, I think that's a that's a real. It's a really good reference. <laughs> yeah, a resource that's audit. The, that's one of the best things that came out of this, I think, for us. Oh, yeah, and we continue to do it because there's two things. I like calling things all I've just remembered I said to my husband mm-hmm. last week that we needed to do a Netflix audit on what's in our continue watching and, and list, my list, because it keeps adding stuff and we're watching all this difference. I said, no, before we add any more, we need to do an audit on what. <laughs> Yes. Oh, Did you see anyway, rolling back in his head. 
but maybe it's too strong a word, but it's just like like it it, cl- it clutters my brain. So that's why, and that's exactly what was happening with mm. these tasks. And as Kelly said, I started thinking, oh, you know, what what am I doing? The key thing is, as Kelly said, we wrote down our tasks, but the key thing was we didn't write them as this big overarching task. We actually broke it down because mm. different people can do different things. Use this podcast as an example. There's yeah. write the newsletter. That's one person. There's create the run sheet. That could be another person. There's record it. There's another job. We used to live stream it. That's another job. Post um I suppose video editing that's Angus someone else then it's the social stuff that's Hazel there's Melissa involved so it's not just the task of podcast it's what makes up that podcast there's there has to be I don't know you eight nine ten different jobs involved in producing this so don't just put podcast it's what what are break it down because they can be different people and I think that was huge for you and I Kelly yeah I just realized my name's Kelly on here too Um, (laughs) so yeah so that I think that was a big thing I I I know I struggled with it initially but really break it down Mm. and then here's a question for you Kelly if we hadn't have done this and we knew that we needed more resources, what role would you have advertised for? Who, who were we going to get in to do what? We're going to get another trainer and assessor, and um, which are instructional. Would that have worked? No, not at all. We discovered that all of the jobs that we were doing were administration jobs, like PA jobs, but they weren't just PA jobs, there was kind of a niche compliance in Compliance stuff, compliance, yeah. admin, stuff that you and I had developed over the years, which you end up doing as part of your bigger job. But when mm-hmm. you start breaking it down, you realise, well, I don't need to be doing all this stuff. I I need to focus on this stuff. And that's, and that's what we done. discovered. Yeah. Yeah. And then there was all of those things that we want to do that we mm-hmm. need to do, mm-hmm. that we're not doing, that we added onto that list as well. Exactly. And that's why, yeah, we still haven't quite got the time that we thought we would because mm-hmm. it's, yeah, it's, yeah, longer. It's the tasks add up to longer than a full-time job for yeah. two people. Yeah. 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 And that was a real, a real eye-opener. And two things that came from that, was obviously we've our team has gone mm-hmm. our customers experience has gone much better as we said we had our best year but that was because we just ironically we had to drop a lot of the backs back end yeah. stuff and focus purely on prioritizing customers yeah. sales etc and that kind of went well hang on there's there's different ways we can do this there's better ways we can do this and in our need to get things done quicker and more efficiently the quality of those, some of those things improved. But yeah, the quality. even all the automations and how we do it and how we man- manage and monitor and stay in contact, yeah, yeah. We're, in, we're improved. So, yeah. you know, this is all coming out to we could make a decision or decisions based on fact. Yeah. Which is embedded in, a, in quality principles. Mm-hmm. So as that's why I asked you that question, Kelly. It's like, well, who would we have employed? Like, yeah, not the right person. Not the right person because mm. that was just all based on what we thought we needed. But once we actually collated this or completed this resource review, it probably took us six weeks to do. Yeah, you um, did. And yeah. we did it independently, which was also interesting because we found – and we're still finding multiple double ups. We were both yeah. doing the same yeah. thing yeah. differently, but in slightly that, that exactly right. Yeah. So it's not only allowed us to make decisions based on fact for resourcing, but also to streamline processes. So 
yeah, I think that's the biggest takeaway. And honestly, I don't think I'd ever do it any differently again. No. And as you said, it's something we continue to do as we're learning our current team strengths. We're adapting that. Yes. Um, changing people's roles in that space or you do really well with this or someone has an idea that goes on there and we work through that so it's almost yeah, yeah it's, it's a living breathing it thing is a living yeah. document yeah which, which is coming up in another in another episode and newsletter actually oh, yeah. <laughs> exciting. Exciting. um but also with that, we've we've certainly made sure that we had processes and procedures in place for all of those yeah. things as well. Um, yeah. And again, making sure that, look, for another example, again, it, it doesn't necessarily need to be the unexpected that we're planning for here. Jackie and I had, well, neither of us had a holiday in that 12 months because we couldn't because there wasn't someone to take that off. So think about it as well as, as a well-being exercise for you and your team and know that you can take time out or your team can take annual leave knowing that they're not yeah. negatively impacting anybody else on the team and they can enjoy that time off. Yeah. So, yeah. Lots of things moving on very quickly. Sorry to this topic too. Again, we've done this, but embracing that flexibility. Um, and we, we learned again, very quickly that flexibility was key. We had to adapt to my schedules, my surgeries, my specialist appointments, um, and I still have some of those ongoing here and now. Um, but it also, um, survivor's cliche, made me reprioritize personal life. So we've adapted my work schedule, but we've done that in a way that Look, we're, we're still all adjusting to that, let's let's be honest. Um, but, again, it's made us focus on that streamlining, that improvement. And you just mentioned then all of that um, that automation. And that's mm -hmm. not automating our customers because we know that they're the priority. We, we've automated things like um, downloading emails or notifying people of a process done, the workflow. Update. Hmm. Yeah, updates. Um, you mentioned the podcast production. You've got we've got ten or so tasks and roles that are in that. I mean, previously, you'd rely on someone to say, "Okay, this is now ready. I have done this. You can find this That's here." That's true. Yes. And if that person just said, "I've done my task," the next person in the line didn't know that that yeah. they had done that. Which again, we'll come to communication. But that being flexible, adapting that, adding that into our workflows. Allow yes. for that. But again, having that flexibility, yes, we don't expect everybody to know everybody else's role, but we like that people have an understanding of and are curious enough to want to learn so that if things do hit the fan again, um, we know that, look, there is a little, it's not just you and I that can jump in. Other people are willing and able to do that yes. as well. Yeah. But when we do make those pivots, we we look at them focused on the end goal, not just yeah. you, you need to look at that bigger picture. Yeah, yeah. Is I there think any with that flexibility, yeah. that's where it comes in as well. If you are the person backing someone up, there's always a way to figure something out, even if it's a temporary thing. Mm. Don't get hung up on, oh, no, I don't know how to do it exactly how Kelly does it. There's always a way. And ask people because I know when you're not here, Kelly, yeah, I work with Christine um, to figure out sometimes I can help, sometimes I can't. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, there's there's always a way to keep people in the loop. And as I said, that goes back to the next topic might be a good segue, that yeah. communication and support. Yeah. Yeah, C keeping the channels open. So, yeah, as you said, communication was, was essential. Um, and yeah. even though at that time it was just us, if I couldn't communicate with you, John would communicate with you yes. and, and keep you in that loop as to, look, she won't be back at work as planned on this day. Or I would say, I'm not at work. I'm just checking my personal <laughs> email on my laptop while messaging you doing things. Yeah. 
And well, I, I don't think know. <laughs> We sort of got to know when you had certain appointments and, yeah. and procedures that are oh, normally Kelly's out after this. So, you know, we, and that goes back to being adaptive as well. We learned, okay, yeah, normally this is tough. Mm. Then we'd, we'd change the schedule to allow you that time to, you know, get over it. Mm. and be be back to you know where you needed to be um mm. to be back at your desk yeah yeah and and that was one thing that again we learned that very early on I would block out my calendar okay mm-hmm. as soon as I knew an appointment it was in my calendar so just just for context there um we work from home so I had a lot more flexibility in look I can go and lie down or I'm coming to work today without it being and a lot of people's um, experience is going to be very different to that. They're not going to have that that option. But making sure that I communicated with the team, look, I'm I am in today, but I'm feeling unwell, or I'm in pain, or I'm only going to be here for this. And again, reprioritizing having that flexibility, but communicating, and that was um, the the Wednesday morning. So Friday diagnosis, Sunday we cried, Monday Tuesday we did virtual training. And then the Wednesday morning, the very first thing we did was we had a Zoom with Karen and let her know. But it was important for us that she knew what was going on as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we, because I deal so closely with our um, our marketing um, contractors, our subject matter experts, um, people at Exemplar Global, there were some people there that we needed to know that, hey, I'm going to be out for weeks at a time or here and there. So I'm not it's going to be consistent. Yeah, I'm mm. not going to be as consistent as I normally would be. And look, I'm still playing catch up on some of those things 12 months later because appointments and things change. But it was really important that we were open and transparent with those people that were going to be m- impacted the most. Um we didn't share it with the 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 community because look that wasn't really they weren't going to be impacted as directly mm. as all, all of our other stakeholders were so yeah really keep those channels open obviously only share what you're comfortable with sharing and for me I am more than happy to share my story um now that I've kind of come out the other side yeah. if I can help someone else and that was that was my main thing was like I'm very how do I say this? I feel that I'm very lucky that we found what we did when we did. Um, and if I can stop somebody else from going through mm-hmm. that experience or or let them have the same experience that I did rather than somebody else's horrible experience that then I will. So yeah, keep Especially those... at such a young age at 40. Yeah. Like it's not expected. No, 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 not at all. So, um, yeah, I just expected to go to the doctor and then say, yeah, you're a silk, go home. Um, <laughs> <not all of that. laughs> um, but, but yeah, but I'm, again, I'm lucky that I have that a team that I'm comfortable communicating with and that I knew that I would have that support um, and that I could go through these. So, it, look, it doesn't necessarily have to be a health crisis. It could be a, a, other unexpected events. Um, recently had a team member who had a death in the family. We, he, That was communicated through um, to us openly that this is possibly happening um, and we were able to support them through that um, as much as we could. So, again... Or world travel for seven weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, communicating, sharing these opportunities. So, yeah, again, there's, there's, that was an unex, another unexpected. Mm-hmm. But we've been flexible, adapted, and are working through that. So, yeah, yeah. Um, moving on because I am conscious of time, and I, I, I could talk about this for now that I'm resolved. <laughs> talk about this for <laughs> days, but I don't know if I've got the energy. Ironically, um, topic number four was prioritizing your energy management, and that's yeah. Processing your energy, not just your time. Um, managing your energy is really important. What I do you can, mean by this? Well, there were days that I quite literally didn't have the energy to do what was on my list. Yes, I had eight hours a day. And, and this week's been a perfect, this week and last week are perfect examples. I gave it my all for two days of training, thinking, <laughs> oh, good. 
And I was exhausted right up until, yes, uh, writing this newsletter was emotionally exhausting. Um, But I had to, rather than focusing on, look, I've got X amount of time to get this done, it's I've got this much energy. What, What can I do that is effective, efficient, important with the energy I have? use my my energy on that appropriately and then look if I've got a bit left over then I can do those other less lower priority tasks yeah um but again that like applies so much to to, um family life but yeah focusing on what truly mattered and you said that we've talked about it earlier that you we had to drop a lot of tasks that Look, you didn't have the time to do them, but you needed to re- focus your energy on our students mm-hmm. and give mm-hmm. them the best of Jackie. Um, <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah, if you had done all of the admin in the background and because that's time sensitive and then come to the students and you're like, yeah, our yeah, course. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, it's not it's not healthy for you or for anyone. You you want to ensure that everyone's productive and positive without burning people out. Yeah. I, I was going to say, you need like to be aware fearful. of your, your body, don't you? Yeah. What it's telling you. Yeah. Your, yeah. your body is telling you things that you don't realize. And this is a perfect example. I knew in my stomach as much as I didn't want to admit it, I knew that I, I had this beast growing inside of me my stomach was telling me and I kept pushing. And if I hadn't, like we wouldn't have, we would, who knows mm. where we'd be right now. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thankfully I had my an incredible doctor, but the same thing. Like I've watched my partner. He's been, yeah, I'm tough. I'm strong. And then he started to burn out because he was prioritizing his energy in the wrong places for the situation he was in. And again, that was my biggest concern for you with it because I know how we just talked about in the last episode about passion and Jackie's yeah. enthusiasm. And I didn't want to dull that flame. And that's so again, making sure that when we're in these situations or more so preparing for these situations, we take into consideration that physical and emotional effect yeah. on people's yeah. energy. And just because, listen, listen to it because I, I do struggle with this personally. Like it's normally I'm an energizer bunny. Mm. At, at the, I did have an suffer an injury probably a month ago. I'm normally a morning person, and as Kelly knows, yeah, I like getting up at four thirty, five o'clock, and so by the time yeah. I'm at work, I've done half a day's of stuff, but yeah. I can't do that at the moment. I'm sleeping sleeping in I've actually got to set the alarm for seven o'clock and even then it's difficult but yeah I'm not being hard on myself because your body needs obviously I'm not I'm not ready yet it's still recovering so I think don't push yourself yeah I actually saw um last night on LinkedIn there was a an overachievers flow chart Yes, that he commented yes. on, and I said yes, 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 and yes, yeah, yeah. And look, I said in my head, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. And look, mm-hmm. it's not, when I looked at that, that wasn't something to be proud of. And again, no. this is something. Um, Shaz, my my nurse, has said to me a million times, Kelly, you need to stop. This is this is about you. You need to trust your mm-hmm. body. You need to. Mm-hmm. Yes, there's other people, but you're you are useless to people if you aren't. Exactly. using your energy wisely and as a, a leader as a manager you need to be mindful of that in your team because once they start to burn out their energy starts to go there once they're... they say oh on their rdo i'm just going to work in the background that's uh-huh. when you say no that's not what an rdo is for <laughs> isn't that right kelly Yes, Jackie, who worked <laughs> on her public holiday. So, oh, practice. other people do. Do as we say, not as we do, really. <laughs> but, but in height, like, in in hindsight, retrospect, whatever it is, there's a lot of things that I 
would really do differently. But at the mm. same time, I know that I probably will do them again because that's that's just how we work. But it's not always the best example for our team. So as you just said to me then, working in, my, in the background on my, I've been caught out on that before. And I, team, like, we saw you completely. <laughs> yeah, but, but adjusting, it, don't, if you're a manager, please be really, my, and Jackie is very good at this. So, um, again, the, there's that banter between us. Um, there's the professional relationship and the friendship as well. We know where that, that line crosses. <laughs> but um, if you're a, a leader and you're expecting this of your team, lead by example. Like if you are having too much, don't be afraid to say, look, I'm feeling a bit burnt out today. I'm going to give you what I can, but please, I'm not going to be the perfect example of who I am today. And that's okay. Um, But be, yeah, again, that comes back to that communication, but yeah, don't, don't burn yourself out because you have to do things reprioritize from there. Um, I mean, I'm going to move on to the next topic because this is kind of a segues on that, um, is value-based decision-making, which is staying true to your core values. It's not dollar-based decision-making. It's about this is important to me. Um, and now that I'm on the other side, I've had a lot of time to reflect. I thought I have handled this perfectly. I'm amazing. And then the 1st of August happened and all of the dates and reminders of this Social media is really bad for this happened on this day 12 months ago. It's not. Or it's, it's not good because it reminds you of nice things. Too. Well, yes, there were some beautiful, beautiful sunsets. Um, sorry, sunsets, sunrises um, in August of last year. That's, that's the positive. <laughs> uh, my, my thoughts keep coming back to an analogy. I've, I've referenced this a couple of times. I uh, said, Shaz, my beautiful breast care nurse, um, she has been amazing for myself and, and for John. She shared with us at our very first meeting, she directed me to a podcast called um, What You What You Don't Know Until You Do or something along those lines. Uh, and I will share the link. It's from the Breast Cancer Network Australia. And in that, um, the, the hosts, um, Dr. Charlotte, oh, my goodness, apologies, I should have written this down. Um, she is a clinical oncology psychologist and she is a breast cancer survivor. And she uses the analogy that life after a cancer diagnosis is like a snow globe. Your life is shaken up and all those little snowflakes representing your values and your priorities float around crazy for 12 months. And then they settle down. But when they do, none of them settle in the same place as they had before. And this has really stuck with me because it's reminded me, obviously, life like like snow globes um does give us a different perspective once that storm has passed yeah. um as i said it's i've got more information about that in the newsletter but for us it really made us prioritize as a business um us as a leadership team our whole team our customers um where the business really wants to focus its energy and time what things are important to at all as a business, um, what things we don't need to do and be doing. Um, and again, we've always been, I, I would like to think as an employee that Jackie has always been very flexible and and, um, and firm to her, her values around being um, supportive to the team and giving them what they need. But this again this we've seen look what we thought was working wasn't working and we've mm-hmm. really consciously made a, a a decision to really focus on supporting our team we've always had professional development opportunities we've always had growth opportunities we've always been given the support that we need but now we're kind of we've taken that up a level and are really making sure that our people have what they need and how we share what what Atoll is both to our team and to our customers. So um, what's what's been your experience in that side, Jackie, being, I suppose, on the other side of this? 
Yeah, I think the first thing that came to mind when you mentioned that is, and it's, it's, I don't even know if it's right, is like it's become a priority because there's more people, which seems ridiculous because mm. it should have been a priority when it was just you and I mostly and, and Karen, but mm. it, we were just too focused on just getting the job done. Um, and I also thought like while your snow globe and your snowflakes um, landed differently, it also impacts or influences is a nicer word, yeah, mm. the business as well, where the person has come from because those snowflakes have landed differently um, and we do recognise differently within Atoll as well. And, you know, we recognise that our team members need to be supported. Well, before it was just you and I and we'd just get the job done, which wasn't right either. Mm. No. But now, <laughs> sorry. You lived that the hard way. Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly, we had to. So that was my thought is that, yeah, these snowflakes have actually landed differently for us as well. So that that sort of diagnosis, it not only, you know, it, and you touched on this, it impacts, impacted you obviously and John and your family, but it's actually, yeah, it sort of goes out far and wide. And my priorities in what I enjoy and focus on and all those sorts of things at a professional level change too. We came back and and I got a promotion in the middle of a cancer treatment because we kind of went, well, you know what, we've got these, these things going on and these are actually the things that I'm good at and these are the things that I want to spend my time and energy on because I don't have time for things that I'm, yep. I look, I I don't have time for things that aren't important or aren't relevant or it's a total cancer cliche, but it's right. And there's just little things that I'm like, we don't need to do that or we could do that better or, yeah. yeah. So it, it, again, the, the business structure change with mm -hmm. every, the whole, yeah, there's snow globes going around everywhere. So <laughs> But again, it's it's how you deal with that, which leads kind of into our final topic, um, which is cultivating resilience and building strength from that experience. Resilience isn't just about bouncing back and it's about coming back stronger. Um, it's got working through that experience and learning from it. Every challenge we face teaches us something new and helps us better prepare for what comes next. So my drama, my misfortune, I know how I feel personally about that, but in a weird kind of way, I'm kind of glad that Atoll got to go through that experience too. It was awful, but we are a completely different team, business, everything to what we were 12 months ago. and I'm can tell you right now, if if I hadn't had that diagnosis, it would have taken us a lot longer to do it that research. Have. Yeah. Um, Thanks, Kelly. You're welcome. I said. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it, it is about learning from that experience and implementing that change um, as employees, as individuals, as employers, um, and and building strength from that, yeah. and making sure that you plan for next time yeah, yeah. Did, did you want to add very anything? true it's it's about I think when as you were describing that I was thinking well it's one thing you know that it impacts you but you also have to be open to understanding what is the impact how can we prevent this what's the improvement it's it's yeah it's corrective action essentially. I know I always, I'm boring and I go back to what the standards <laughs> say, but that's really what it is. You have to be open to it because yeah. otherwise you, you, you're not going to change yeah. and improve. So, um, you know, it has been yeah, a huge wake-up call for me personally with regards to Atoll, mm. but obviously, yeah, it's much more personal for you. Mm. Yeah. Look, I think, uh, and I'm sure a lot of other people who have been through it 
will say, look, I'm just living it. I'm going through it. I'm doing it because I have to. For me, I feel like it in, in, and look, this is where I'm, this is what's going to get me. I feel like it impacted you and John and Bailey and yes. all of my support crew more than it impacted me because I've watched all of you struggle through that. And I'm just sitting here being supported along the way by my medical team while you guys are all not really like yes you were supported but yeah you had you went through the worst part but that's typical kelly (laughs) stuff and i think that's everyone though you do worry about your family and people close to you and yeah how how they're coping because i suppose the focus is always on the on the person going through the I was gonna say the shit. The shit. Um yeah. That's right, I'm putting um, a language warning, remember? <laughs> <laughs> but um you know it's it is shared. Yeah. Yeah. And it is a support, it is a support team. Like you know, as you said, John sort of struggled because his whole focus would have been on you. Yeah. And and I just want to flag here, um while I'm the patient and he was my primary support person. We both had very different experiences. So if you're a manager and you're listening to this, please be mindful that the person who is supporting the person going through this needs as much, if not more, support, understanding, flexibility, all of those things than the person going through it. Because I can tell you right now that there was a lot more support and experience coming from you and the other directors here at Atoll for John than they were from his employers. They just expected him to do both of those things, which was which was quite heartbreaking. Um, so, yeah, be, be mindful that yeah. this doesn't relate to that. Um, just on this cultivating resilience, just because, it, like, cancer wasn't enough, we also had in there um, the, the tornado Christmas night. We thought we were all sorted, we were all coming back to it, and then... We're like, yeah, we've learned from this and then more stuff happened and I have not seen more resilience than I have ever in than the community of Tambourine Mountain than I did on that night. So yeah. encourage grocery. I can, look, I, I would like to say hand on heart, I'm not going to put money on it because I'm a really bad gambler. Um, <laughs> if we were to do a risk assessment at this time last year, we would not have had cancer, tornadoes, international junkets, None of those things would have been on our risk assessment. Yeah. So expect the unexpected. Yeah, that's true. Be ready. Be ready. Yeah, yeah. as best as you can. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I am going to start to wrap us up there. So I just want to recap really quickly. Um, those six steps were preparation, planning ahead, consider the potential challenges and develop contingency plans as best as you can, as Jackie just said. Uh, Number two, adaptation, embrace flexibility, encourage your team to pivot quickly when circumstances change, but support them in doing that. Um, Communication and support, number three, keeping the channels open. Open and honest communication is essential, especially during times of change and challenging experiences. Number four, prioritising that energy management, managing your energy, not just to your time and focusing on that energy management does result in better outcomes. Number five, values-based decision-making. Stay true to your core values. Make decisions that align with those core values. And again, referring to that snow globe analogy. And number six was cultivating resistance. Build strength from experience. Resilience. Resilience. My goodness. (laughs) Cultivate resilience. Look, there's a bit of resistance there. Clearly something subconscious going on. Cultivate resilience. Build strength from experience, encouraging learning and growth from every challenge. My challenge today is the word resilience, which is very <laughs> ironic. Um, Jackie, did you have anything else that you wanted to add before we sign off for today? No, I think you covered that really well. Thank you very much for sharing, uh, yeah, a very difficult time but also yeah seeing the outcomes and the positives from it as well yeah and I think yeah. that's the the key the important thing um so I am going to wrap up today's episode there um expect the unexpected building resilience 
in your team. <laughs> um, I do hope that you found this discussion really valuable. Please do check out Lead um, the Standard Newsletter 62 on LinkedIn. Um, before we go, I, I'm not going to be here for the next two episodes, but you are in great hands. Jackie will be here um, with Caitlin. Um, she is going to be joining next week for episode 16, Embracing Diverse Thinkers, Strategies for Inclusive and Effective Collaboration. It is going to be a fantastic discussion, so be sure to tune in. Um, as always, don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter and leave us a review. I do very quickly, though, want to go off script for a moment, and I am going to get in so much trouble for this. Um, I did not prepare Jackie for this earlier. I do want to just really take a moment to highlight we've we have briefly touched on it a couple of times here the importance for supporting the supporting i've got to cover jackie's face right now sorry um it's really need to extend a heartfelt thank you to jackie and the entire atoll team past and present um and the wider community, sorry. <laughs> we got to, so far. We got so far. I knew this was coming. Um, doing this on your own is one thing, but to go through this with the support that I have from Jackie, and, yes, we've just shared all of our challenges, but we have gotten through this on the other side. We have. We are better people, I think, for it. Uh, again, another cliche. Um Working through this, the support I've received through the surgeries, the brain fog, the emotional highs and lows, there's been a few of those, um, and the need for the flexibility has been nothing short of amazing. And for that, um, John Bailey and I will be forever grateful. Um, but particularly for Jackie, you are the most supportive boss. You're an absolute legend, and you don't get nearly enough credit for the work that you do behind the scenes here for us uh, as a team. And I thank you for being the rock that keeps us all grounded. So apologies for making you cry on yeah, YouTube. Fine. That was my goal of the day. <laughs> um, just to our listeners, I do, um, on a selfish note, I really do want to ask that please, if you're listening to this podcast, encourage all the women in your life and the men, because men get breast cancer too, to check themselves and to really trust your bodies. Um, early detection can make all the difference and it will save your life. As I said, if I didn't trust my body, my GP didn't listen to me, who knows where I would be in the future. So if you do find yourself um, or anyone you care about in this situation, please don't hesitate to reach out to me, to BCNA. They are amazing. From a personal experience, I know how isolating this journey can feel as a patient, no matter how strong and amazing your support network is. Um, so I am here to offer my support to anybody who feels that they need it. So thank you again, Jackie, for being incredible and for giving me this opportunity to share my story and to hopefully help others learn from our, as you put it, bullshit year <laughs> that we have had. So thank yeah. you for being amazing. No, thank you very much. And you haven't made me feel like a rock now, but <laughs> A little bit, a little bit of water trickling over the top. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You're well worth it, Kelly. I have to say. Thank you. Thank you <laughs> again. Please join us next week for Caitlin. She will be certainly worth the conversation as well. Whole different tangent. I'm sure there'll be a lot of laughter and tears there as well. So I'm going to end this episode there. Thank you all um, for watching. Join us again next week. Thanks for joining us once again as we lead the standard. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast for more episodes just like this. And don't forget to leave a review if you found today's episode informative and inspiring. If you're already an Atoll student, remember participating in live Q&A sessions just like this is one of the exclusive perks of your enrolment. And if you're not already a student, join us at our website, www.auditortrainingonline.com to learn more about our courses and how you can start making a difference in your career in ISO management system standards. So join us again next week as we not just meet the standards, but we lead them.